Seven years after that picture that you saw at the beginning of the video was taken, they're all gone. They're all ex-Mets. Matt Harvey, Noah Syndergaard, Jacob deGrom now, Steven Matz, Zach Wheeler. All five are gone. All are pitching on either different teams or are free agents. And just to think, six, seven years, about seven years ago, eight years ago, that there was so much potential with that rotation. All of them suffered injuries. All of them are experiencing different levels of success now in Major League Baseball. But to think that none of them are Mets anymore, and even more glaring to think that there was only one full turn through that rotation since they all came up. They've been, all been in the Major Leagues now since 2015. That was when the full five came together. And the, they had so many injuries that they only made it through the rotation, all five of them, one time. It is unbelievable to me, but that is just part of being a Mets fan. You know what? I guess I should be grateful for the one pennant that the Mets actually got. <laughs> it's a lot better than Generation K in the early 90s. So I, I just felt that was the best way to start, rather than just come on and overreact about Jacob deGrom leaving the New York Mets for the Texas Rangers. Just looking at the big picture on what the future of that pitching rotation looked like and what it turned into. Pretty unbelievable. So uh, I got to give credit to the Texas Rangers. Although I think they offered an absolutely crazy contract, I give them credit. They're showing an ability that if there is a player they want, they have the means to go out there and get that player. You know, for a long time, that wasn't the case. They signed A-Rod to the $252 million contract many years ago. But as of recently, you know, you saw it last year with signing the middle infield with Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager. And there were rumors that they wanted DeGrom. They had to get that starting uh, pitching stabilized, and they absolutely went ahead and did that. Still don't think they're a playoff team, but you know what? I'll give them credit. Five years, $185 million guaranteed. It was a chance that Texas had to. As far as the Mets go, I'm not angry at the organization. I'm seeing, I've heard even people on the radio talk about how this is Wilpon esque. It's not even close to that. Okay, the Mets offer Jacob DeGon three years, $120 million guaranteed. That is a more than reasonable offer for a 34 year old pitcher who has suffered injury after injury, who hasn't pitched 100 innings in four years. Okay, you don't know what you're going to get from him anymore, even though the upside with him is higher than it is for any other pitcher who was on the market, certainly in terms of the free agency market. It does hurt to lose him very much. He is, in my mind, probably the second best pitcher in franchise history behind Tom Seaver. I mean, just looking at the rankings, 2.52 ERA, best all time. 0 0.99 whip, best all time in the history of the Mets. 82 wins, that's seventh. Strikeouts fourth, 1,607. But strikeouts per nine innings, 10.9, best in Mets history. Even better than Tom Seaver, better than Dwight Gooden. Better than Jerry Kuzman, you name the guy. So with that in mind, I'm thinking a lot about what the Mets should do with this starting rotation going forward. As a matter of fact, this whole pitching staff is in, in an absolute state of upheaval. Uh, but the bullpen, we could talk about that at another time. Right now, I'm really focusing on the starting rotation and what it should look like this year and in the near future. Now, I've come on here before and made a video about how I was not excited about signing Carlos Rodon with his injury history. He had one outstanding year with San Francisco, but I think he is really going to get overpaid. To me, this is not a picture you would give $25 million or $30 million a year to at all. I am not comfortable signing him for, and also for, he'll probably take four or five years. I just don't have a good feeling about Rodon. I, the first thing I would do now is sign Justin Verlander. I would give him two years, $35 million a year. You need another legitimate go-to starting pitcher at the top of that rotation, you know, especially if Scherzer gets injured again next year. You, know, you, you need to have some depth at this rotation, but you need some upside. And Verlander, if nothing else, is reliable. He's won a Cy Young Award very recently. He's pitched on the big stage before. I would give Verlander a two-year contract as soon as I possibly could. Hopefully that's enough to lure him to New York. Now, in addition to that, I would sign one other starting pitcher as sort of my number three. Okay, and I would take one of three 
pitch pitchers for the three spot. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stretch it out and say one of four, but it's really there's three I want to focus on primarily. Two of them were Mets last year: Chris Bassett and Taiwan Walker. Sign one of the two of them. I'm thrilled. The third is Kodai Senga, who we've talked about in a previous video as well. He's only 30 years old. He has great, great stuff. He's been absolutely dominant in Japan for the last couple of years. The Mets have already met with him. So if I could have a rotation next year of Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, and either Kodai Senga, Chris Bassett, or Taiwan Walker, I can live with that. And then you can factor in a David Peterson. You can factor in a Tyler McGill behind that, maybe even a Joey Lucchese if, he choose, if he's returning to the starting rotation as opposed to the bullpen. I know the Mets have also met with Jamison Tyon. Uh, there's a couple of other players I would focus on as well. Jamison Tyon they've met with. He's going to have a pretty big market. To me, that's fine, but that's got to be, at best, your second starter, maybe even your third starter that you're signing in free agency. To me, Tyon is maybe a number four type of a pitcher. I feel kind of the same way about Jose Quintana, although I haven't heard a lot about his market. But Quintana pitched very well with St. Louis last year after he went to them in the trade deadline. Quintana is a pitcher I would be very interested in for this rotation as well. Don't know if the Mets are going to pursue him. Outside of that, you're going to the Kyle Gibsons, the Sean Maniahs, uh, Noah Cinder. <laughs> Noah Syndergaard, yeah, okay. <laughs> like Noah Syndergaard's ever coming back to the Mets. But to me, the Mets have to absolutely have to bring in Justin Verlander and at least one other at middle of the rotation level starting pitcher and maybe one more on the back end for some depth. Uh, because losing Jacob deGrom, that does free you up about 35 to $40 million that you could spend elsewhere now. And I am not comfortable giving $30 million of it or so to Carlos Rodon. I'm, I'm just not. So that's how I'm feeling about the starting rotation right now uh, going forward. And, really, and if, even if you look at the Mets' prospects going forward, there's not a whole lot to get excited about for the near term. They have some good pitching prospects, but they're still two years away. Matt Allen coming off Tommy John surgery. Calvin Ziegler. There's a couple of other ones as well. But this starting rotation right now needs to be very patch and plug. In, in their approach. Signing one and two year contracts, really two year contracts would make the most sense. Then you have these kids who are ready to start coming up. Then maybe you have more controllable assets in the starting rotation. So for me, that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. I think the Mets really need to focus their free agency on their pitching. And I'll tell you one other thing. If the Mets could possibly get Brandon Woodruff from the Milwaukee Brewers, I'd be on the phone right now with Milwaukee about that. There are rumors that the Brewers are going to make him available in trade talks. I think it would take a lot to get him, but I really am a fan of Woodruff. I think the Brewers are just going to invest in Corbin Burns. We all know how the Brewers work. They only hand out so many long-term contracts to their stars, and I think they're going to invest in Burns. So to me, not that I'm too thrilled about giving up pitching prospects or any prospects at this point for a farm system that's not very uh, high on a, a lot of high-end talent, but Brandon Woodruff is a player I would be very open to trading for if the Mets were to do that, but I still think the Mets, at the end of the day, their goal is Shohei Itani next year when he hits free agency. To be the hitter, to be the pitcher that they want to bring to Queens, they're going to want to bring in that marquee player, to which I say, okay, all well and good, but you better not be punting on this season because this season still matters. You can't put all your eggs in the Shohei Otani basket. So those, those are some of my thoughts on where the Mets uh, pitching situation is right now. Uh, what do you want to see the Mets do as far as pitching goes? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Are you interested in Verlander, Rodon? Do you have another pitcher in mind that they could realistically trade for? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.